Welcome back, everyone, to the October episode of the UFC Cutting Room Floor, where I'll be looking back at the roster cuts and signings for the month of Oct- of August. Just ended. As you know, yesterday, October 1st was cut day. That's the first of every month for the UFC. So here's an upfront disclaimer. Just off the bat, I'm not doing this show to, like, revel in any fighters losing their jobs or talk about how happy I am to see anybody go or anything like that. That's not really my thing. I just want to keep track of, as somebody who, you know, follows sport rights about it, I think it's important to keep track and know who's actually fighting in the UFC. Keep that fairly up to date. And unfortunately, the UFC itself does a pretty poor job of that for all sorts of reasons, many of them perfectly justifiable business reasons that they don't really feel like they need fans to be totally up to date on who has a contract right now and who doesn't. Um, And some of them just them being lazy. Anyway, this was actually a pretty low signing and cutting month for the UFC. So, I mean, they got about equal influx to outflux. A couple of fighters retired. They signed and cut one guy on the same day, basically. And they brought in about seven new fighters over the last month. Uh, big, the biggest name probably to go out as of cut day is Ramsey Nijem, who has had, let's see, what is, what is he at? He went five and five overall in the UFC, stretching back to his time on tough in 2011. A generally exciting lightweight. I think a lot of people I know were kind of complaining about him being cut. And the theme of this really seems to be to me, uh, it's kind of like the UFC's idea of cuts where if a guy's not getting better, they're getting rid of him. And I understand Ramsey Nijem, people are definitely upset about him because he had a really close decision. A lot of people thought he should have won his last fight. And that, so it's kind of like uh, he's getting cut off of a off of being robbed, which is terrible. But at the same time, I mean, if you followed his career, we're talking about somebody who's had 10 fights in the UFC and just never really seems to have improved. So I can understand why they might be looking to show him the door. I also think he's the kind of fighter that could be back any moment that they need a a late notice fill in, um, especially as a U.S. based fighter. Anytime there's going to be a card around the U.S. where they need a lightweight at the last minute, and that happens pretty regularly, I could see him being the first guy that gets the call, especially being a pretty exciting fighter for the promotion. He's only 27. He is pretty much in the prime of his career, which is both good and bad for him. I mean, it means that he should hopefully be able to you know, win fights and doesn't need to do a lot of developing and stuff like that out on the regional scene. But It also means that you're kind of getting cut right at the time when you should be making the most money in your career. You don't have that much time left. So hopefully for him, he can make some kind of quick turnaround. Uh, Other other fighter I was a bit surprised at being cut is Elias Silverio. He went three and two for the promotion, started out on a three-fight win streak uh, before dropping his last two fights. And... He was a fighter I really had some hope for. I really thought that he would be a good, a good, frankly, a good welterweight for the promotion. I think that probably is kind of what undid him, is that his decision to drop to lightweight, um, he was a massive lightweight, really thick fighter. Seemed like he didn't have a great weight cut. Seemed like he was always drained at 155. Took a lot of the excitement out of his style. He's really a guy who, like, he came in as kind of a Muay Thai striker, very aggressive striker and suddenly being down at lightweight he really couldn't be a high output fighter and he tried to kind of change it up become more of a grappler rely more on his wrestling but he really you know he wasn't he couldn't change fast enough it seems like to meet um the competition he was facing you know he wasn't gonna outbox Rashid Magomedov and he couldn't out wrestle him and then wasn't going to out kickbox Shane Campbell. And it turns out that because he got so drained, he couldn't out grapple him for very long either. So, uh, you know, I, I really, 
I hope he goes back to welterweight, gets a couple more wins, and turns around. His career is very young. He's he's 29, so he's not the youngest guy in the world, but he only started fighting in 2011, so he still has a lot of room to improve and get better. Hopefully he can turn around, go back to jungle fight or something like that, rattle off a couple more wins, and be right there back in the UFC because I think he's a guy that has some real promise and just maybe made a bad career decision and then had to face some pretty talented fighters who were better than him at what he did well. Uh, and the final uh, fighter to be officially cut was George Blade Oliveira. Not a big surprise there. He was brought in um, as a last-minute fill-in, I believe, and took on Diego Oliveira for a short notice fight. Or Diego Lima, rather, for a short notice fight. Got really badly at work. Did not look good. Uh, dropped down to lightweight to fight Christos Giagos and looked even worse. Just got absolutely run over by Giagos. Really de- didn't seem to have evolved any game past his striking, which is hard to believe for a guy who has dabbled on and off in MMA since like 2006. I mean, I realize that he primarily comes from a kickboxing background, really sort of action heavy fighter, but he's even got a couple of subs in there. And he's, you know, even if he hasn't fought in the cage long enough, he's been around the sport long enough that he should be more well-rounded than he was. He's already 35. Um, so I would be pretty surprised if he turned around and came back to the UFC at any point, especially because he's going out under a failed drug test as well. So 0-2 in a failed drug test. Oliver is not a big surprising cut. The other fighter that they released, uh, Nazarena Malagari, Argentinian, well-rounded fighter, maybe just not a good enough athlete quite for the UFC. I'm not really, I didn't even consider him signed just because he came in off tough and lost his first fight in the UFC after tough. And while the UFC has been keeping more fighters like that lately, uh, traditionally they've always released guys when they fail to win their first UFC fight coming off a season of tough and aren't in the finale. So Malagari, he fought uh, Neto BJJ, who's a really solid power punching, uh, good athlete, very high-level athlete. And it just ended up being a case that Malagari met a, you know, a, a high-caliber athlete. And the fact that he's not bad at anything but not great at anything meant that he really couldn't get a lot done in that fight. It was a disputable decision, but still I'm not surprised to see Malagari go. Um, other news, uh, two big retirements over the last month. Rich Franklin finally retired. A lot of people kind of figured he'd already retired years ago. His last fight was in 2012, so it's been three years since Franklin last fought. But he's always talked about coming back for one last bout. Um, that's just not going to happen. So Rich Rich Hall or uh, Rich Rich Franklin gets into the Hall of very good. Um, you know, classic. One of a very few number of UFC middleweight champions, the guy that everybody thought would be dominant and on top of the world for a while before Anderson Silva came along and then was kind of a win-loss fighter ever since then. But uh, the other fighter that finally retired as well, Sam Sam Stout, been win-loss 500 guy all through his UFC career really more of a uh, just an exciting action fighter for the UFC, somebody they could always rely on to put in good rounds, have fun fights, and you know, n- never got knocked out, was always willing to just stand and trade until you know, he finally started getting knocked out and he's fin- he had to retire because of it. So that was the other big retirement last month. And the fight that they cut, signed and cut in the same day, Alan Yam- Yamaniha, uh, was signed to face uh, Kid Yamamoto on short notice on the Japan card. I don't know if it was Yamamoto that got injured or Yamaniha that got injured. I would have to kind of think that Yamaniha must have not been able to make the fight. I've heard reports that Yamamoto got injured, but I'm not 100% on that because usually if the UFC signs somebody on short notice and their opponent pulls out, then they keep the guy they signed. But um, if that guy can't uh, 
if the guy they signed on short notice can't make the fight, then they'll cut him, and that's what they did here. So I kind of think that maybe Yamaniha went down with an injury uh, right after they signed him for that Japan card. In terms of signings over the last month, obviously they signed Mizuta Hirota and Teruto Ishihara off their Road to UFC Japan series, and that funky draw because the UFC can't seem to run a modern day MMA tournament to save their life and get everybody on the same page that if it goes to a draw that there should be an additional round to break the tie but whatever I mean it's only happened all three times they've done it in the past what is it was BJ Penn Kaluno that a decade ago 15 years anyway a lot or Every time they've done it in the past 15 years, it has failed miserably. Um, but Mizuto, uh, Hirota, and Teruto Ishihara both get contracts off the weird sort of tough Japan season. And that's not bad. I don't know. I don't have high hopes for Hirota. He seemed really chinny. He got dropped every round of that fight. Um even if he thought he should have won it, I, I don't know how well he's going to do in the UFC following that. He's already had a long career under his belt. Ishihara looks like a good, strong prospect, young, good, solid athlete, young fighter. Needs a lot of work, but hopefully he can... I, I don't know much about the uh, out Team Alpha Male Japan that he's a part of, but hopefully, that, hopefully they're bringing in some legit coaching and some very modern sort of U.S. style training and they can really improve him and turn his career around or turn his career, help him achieve his potential. I should say not turn his career around because he's been doing pretty well, but help him achieve his potential and become another good Japanese fighter in the UFC. Doesn't have to be even championship quality, just somebody that wins regularly. UFC also signed two Polish fighters over the last month, Damian Grabowski and Carolina Kowalkiewicz. Um, Koval- Kowalkiewicz is one of the best 115 pound talents in the world's best draw weight talents outside the UFC. Really solid kickboxer by the numbers, not a lot of power, but very consistent, high output, varied attacks, likes to mix in leg kicks, to strikes, comes at a lot of good angles. Um, and she, and, re- and she's a good grappler, too. Miss- missing that wrestling chunk, not the world's greatest athlete, so I don't know that she's going to climb well up uh, through the top 10, but I could easily see her being a sort of 9 through 11 ranked fighter for a couple of years. Um, Damian Grabowski, very solid regional heavyweight, reminds me a lot of Alexi Alinek, not quite as positionally solid, not quite as fundamentally sound as Alinek. But very successful 20 and 2 record. Finally coming over to the UFC. I think it's just a nice filler addition, the kind of guy that can gatekeep for the lower level talent. And I don't know that he'll ever grab a ranking spot, but just be a very solid fighter for them. They also signed a very promising uh, welterweight striker, Danny Roberts, good solid boxer. Um, needs to work on his takedown defense, English fighter. So. Kind of fits a little more of the classic English mold. Lately, uh, a lot of the British fighters have been becoming much better wrestlers and grapplers than before. We've seen a lot better takedown defense, a lot more well-rounded games out of them. Robert's a bit more of a throwback, very good power striker, good combination boxer, decent offensive wrestler, but not the best defensive wrestler in the world. So we'll see how well he does in the UFC, if he can shore that up. And uh, they brought on lightweight Net, uh, Joe Kim Silva, who I talked about from his fight with Nazarena Malagari. He beat Malagari, Neto BJJ. Good athlete, power puncher, very much in the, like, you know, n- not that he has the wrestling background, but not that Dan Henderson used it in the later part of his career, but very much the sort of single punch style of fighting. I guess you'd call it like more like Nick Hine where he just sort of throws one hand, and that's really all he's looking for. But he's got power, he's got good timing, he's a good athlete. So it'll be interesting to see if he can round out his game, become a more varied fighter in the future. And they signed Luis, uh, heavyweight Luis Henrique, who is going to be taking on Francis Naganu. Um, Henrique's big, he's not especially 
talented or an especially great athlete. Seems tough, though. It'll be interesting to see how he does against Naganu, who seems like a really stellar, stellar top shelf athlete who's really raw, does not have a lot of second or a lot of well polished technical skills. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how he does against someone like Henrique, who doesn't have a lot of technical skills, is not a great athlete, but seems like he's really tough and consistent. So that. That's just sort of, it seems like kind of a setup fight for Nagano to see if he can get get past the sort of baseline of heavyweight talent for the UFC. I don't know that I'd have great hopes for Henrique otherwise, although he'll probably end up dropping down to light heavyweight at some point in the future. Maybe he could be better there, but either way. That covers pretty much all the uh, roster movement for the UFC over the last month. Like I say, not a big month for the UFC. They signed a few guys, they cut a few guys. Most of their cuts, Silverio, Nijam especially, seem really very much targeted on the you guys haven't shown that you're improving fast enough like we would hope and expect for fighters come, uh, who have been with the promotion over a few fights. So that's kind of tough luck. I think both of them have a good shot at getting back in the promotion if they can win regionally, though. And uh, I'll be back next month to highlight the cuts and signings then because it's an infinite wheel, always turning, always new talent, always new people to talk about. So thanks for tuning in and see you next month. Oh, and of course, before I forget, follow me on Twitter at the Zane Simon. Check out my stuff over Bloody Elbow. Subscribe to MMANation.com over on YouTube and give us a like while you're there. That's the thumbs up thing. Thanks, everyone.